Hey, welcome to KSC Academy. My name is Lewis, and in today's video, I want to talk about the B2 First uh, Speaking Part 1. In a previous video, I already talked about the whole speaking test, but in this one, I want to focus specifically on Part 1. But before we carry on, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of my videos. So let's get started now. What are we going to learn in today's video? Well, we're going to be doing four things in particular. Uh, the first thing is uh, we're going to see a description of the FCE speaking part one. Okay, remember that uh, FCE means first certificate in English, which is the old name for the B2 first. All right, but whenever I say FCE or I say B2 first, I'm meaning or I'm referring to, to the same exam. So first we're going to see a description, then we're going to see different types of questions and topics that uh, can appear in this part of the exam. And then we're going to see some sample questions for different topics. And then uh, I'm going to tell you a few do's and don'ts for this part. Basically, uh, I'm going to give you some recommendations on what to do and what to avoid. So let's start with the description of uh, speaking part one. Now, um, essentially, all right, the, this part of the speaking is an interview, which means that the examiner will ask you questions and you will have to answer them. Uh, and it is done individually. Um, even though you have a partner, you know this, all right, uh, you have a partner for the exam, these questions are addressed to you and you have to answer them alone. And uh, in total, all right, including the initial questions, each candidate will uh, answer around four to six questions, all right? So these include your name, your um, where you come from, and then a few topic-based questions. Now, the order of the questions uh, are the initial questions at the beginning, all right? And these include uh, the name, asking for the mark sheets, and where you're from, these three questions and then the topic questions. But we'll focus on this in a minute. Now let's move on to the questions and topics that you can see or that you will see in speaking part one. Now, at the beginning, the interlocutor will ask you a series of fixed questions. So we're gonna see an example right now. The interlocutor will say something like this. Uh, Good afternoon, my name is Lewis Wadley and this is my colleague, whatever. Uh, and your names are? So here's where you need to say your name. And then he or she will ask for your uh, mark sheets, right? They'll say, can I have your mark sheets, please? And you'll have to hand in uh, the mark sheets. Um, the mark sheet is just a piece of paper with your name and uh, candidate number. And uh, that's where the assessor, okay, that's the other examiner, is where the assessor will write uh, the, the scores that they give you. Um, so, can I have your mark sheets, please? Thank you. Where are you from, candidate A and you, candidate B? Uh, first, we'd like to know something about you. And that's the, the first set of questions. That's the beginning of the exam, and it's always like that. Now, moving on to topic questions, which can be quite varied, to be honest. Uh, this Here is an example, which I've taken from the book that I wrote uh, last summer. And uh, I'll just leave the link below in case you're interested. In this case, there are a few questions about holidays and traveling, like, when was the last time that you went on holiday? Or when, when you're on holiday, how do you like to travel? How often do you travel abroad? And so on. So um, even though um, there are four or five questions per topic, uh, this, doesn't mean that <clears throat> this doesn't mean that the examiner will ask you or your partner or both of you the four questions, okay? He or she will choose one or two as appropriate according to the time that they have or uh, the, the kind of language that you've already produced or how long you've been speaking for. Uh, another topic could be free time, like uh, how do you like to spend your free time? That's a very typical question. Or how much free time do you have? Or do you prefer to spend your free time alone or with friends and so on? And another topic could be something like television. Do you enjoy watching TV? Do you think people spend too much time watching TV nowadays? And so on. Now I'm gonna show you more sample questions uh, with different topics, all right? The first one here, for instance, is 
work and study, things like what do you do, as in do you work, do you study, what do you study, what do you work in, and so on. Uh, what would make a job interesting for you? What kind of skills do you need in your job? Etc. 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 For personal background as well, that's a very typical topic to to ask about in this part of the exam. In how many different places have you lived during your life? Can you describe your neighborhood? Uh, do you come from a big or a small family? Would you like to live in the same place for a long time? Blah blah blah. Another topic. <clears throat> which is very common, is travel and holidays. Like, um, how do you normally spend your holidays? What's the last foreign country you visited? Did you like it? Uh, have you ever been to a city that has disappointed you? Where was it? Uh, what's the most interesting place you have visited and why? And do many tourists visit your city? And what's your favorite means of transport? So you, here you have a list of questions that are that, that could easily appear in this part of the exam. Now, if you want more sample questions, you can visit the, the post uh, on my website and you have the link here and I'm going to leave the link in the description as well, where you have a few more topics and sample questions that you can use to practice. Now, this is the probably the most important uh, part of this video, all right, because I'm going to give you some tips on how to do this part and some things that you have to avoid doing in the exam if you want if you want to avoid losing points. Um, so let's see. In general, uh, your answers should be concise but complete. So in general, your answers should be concise but complete. That means short or not too long, but uh, they must contain all the information necessary to provide a suitable uh, answer to the examiner, right? then obviously you need to produce B2 level language, all right, or language at a B2 level. And uh, this is important as well, and some people forget it, uh, and it's that you should avoid rehearsed answers, all right? So if you've memorized uh, an answer for the first question, like, uh, where are you from? Um, be careful with that, because it's very easy as a teacher, I can tell that you've rehearsed that um, that response, and uh, I, I suppose the examiners don't like that either. So let's see now some examples of things that you should do and things that you shouldn't do. So um, I'm going to show you a few questions and uh, a, a bad answer and uh, a good answer, and I'm going to explain why you why, why one is wrong and the other one is um, is okay. So the first one, where do you come from? And I say, I come from Ronda. Uh, maybe this answer is suitable, right? But you can make it a little better by adding something like this. I come from a beautiful city in the south of Spain called Ronda. Now, I know that this is uh, rehearsed, but it's only one sentence. So basically, if you manage to say something like that, go for it, okay? But to be honest, in this case, the first answer is not bad either. Another question, what do you like about the place where you live? Bad answer. I like the weather, the monuments, the people and my neighborhood. And then we have a good answer that would be something like, what I like most about Granada is that it has a very nice climate and many beautiful monuments. Now, why is the first one wrong and the second fine? Well, the first one is wrong because I'm only providing the examiner with a list of things. I'm saying, I like this, this, and that. And I'm not producing any particular language. However, in the second one, I'm saying what I like most, and that's a, like a B2 structure, what I like most about Granada is that it has a very nice climate and many beautiful monuments. So I'm adding uh, more adjectives, I'm adding more uh, structures, and it's much better than, than the first one. Then, do you and your friends recycle at home? Question about recycling. Do you and your friends recycle at home? Wrong answer. Yes, we do. Uh, obviously, this is a very short answer. Whenever you answer a question, you need to justify why you think or don't think something. Yes, of course. Recycling is extremely important, so we try to recycle everything. That's much better than just, yes, we do. And it's not a long answer, right? It's not a whole paragraph or anything. It's just 
quick answer, but with a justification. What sports do young people do in your country? Wrong answer. Football, basketball, handball and tennis. Right? First of all, I'm providing just a list of things. And then uh, I'm not even using a, f a sentence. Okay, I'm not using a subject and a predicate. So that's something you must avoid at all costs. All right? Uh, so you can say something like the most popular sports in Spain are without a doubt team sports like football or basketball. I mean, in, in the second answer, I'm only mentioning two sports, but I'm constructing a proper sentence, which is going to be a lot better for, uh, for the examiner to know that I can speak English at a B2 level. All right. More. Is it expensive to eat out in your city? Wrong answer. Yes, very expensive. The other day I went out with some friends to a bar before going to the pub and we had a problem with the bill and we had to pay more because the waiter had made a mistake. All right, this answer grammatically or, or linguistically is fine, but I'm not really answering the question. Uh, is it expensive to eat out in your city? Yes, very expensive, but the, the, what, what comes next, the rest of the sentence or the rest of the answer is, is not really related. I mean, I'm not saying that it's expensive. I'm talking about one personal experience that I had and uh, I'm basing, uh, I'm using that in my answer and uh, the examiner is not interested in this, right? The examiner is interested in your language and whether you're answering the question appropriately. And this is not an appropriate answer. An appropriate answer would be something like, well, it really depends on where you go. Some restaurants can be expensive, but there are also some inexpensive places. Okay, it depends on where you go. Some are expensive, but others are inexpensive. So this answer is very appropriate because it provides the information that the question is, uh, is uh, demanding. And uh, it's not about something that happened to me one day, all right? The, the examiner is not asking about my life uh, in particular, all right? It's asking about my city and the second answer is much better. Another example. What type of music do you like? What type of music do you like? I normally listen to rock music or rap or... Or what? Finish your answers, okay? Don't leave your sentences unfinished, okay? Don't just end in a, in a you know, like, a, like an awkward silence. No, you have to give your uh, sentences a proper ending and uh, if you don't do that, it gives the wrong impression, all right? I normally listen to rock music or rap or pop, not much else, really. Okay, that's, that's fine. I normally listen to rock music, rap or pop, not much else, really. That's it. So that's one full sentence, not just like ending my sentence like that, okay? That's, uh, that doesn't give a very good impression. So, in conclusion, the do's and don'ts. Give concise yet complete answers, right? I talked about this at the beginning and I'm going to mention it here as well. Uh, very important. Don't list things, all right? Uh, the examiner is not interested in, in how knowledgeable you are. No, they're interested in, in how well you speak. And if you just provide a list of things or a list of cities or hobbies or whatever, uh, that's not producing proper language. Especially, it's not, I mean, it's not appropriate for a B2 level exam. And next, uh, always justify your short answers. So if you say, yes, I do, or no, I don't, or yes, it is, or whatever, try to add something else. Yes, I do, because, blah, blah, blah. Um, don't use short phrases without a subject or predicate. So remember the answer about uh, sports, uh, football, tennis, and, and handball. No. Uh, in Spain, we normally play football, uh, but tennis and handball are also very popular. Okay, try to uh, construct a proper sentence with subject and predicate. And uh, another important point is to stick to the topic of the question, all right? If the question is asking about whether it is expensive or not to eat, in, uh, to eat out in your city, just uh, make sure that your answer is completely related to that. And don't just talk about your personal experience uh, doing something else. And uh, also important is to try to finish your sentences properly. Okay, don't, 
don't leave your answers unfinished because it it really shows that you can't speak properly so that's basically it um, things you should do and things you shouldn't do uh, I think it's a pretty good list uh, but if you think I've forgotten something to just leave a comment below and I'll, I'll be happy to include it as well and um, well that that's it I just wanted to mention as well that uh, you can buy my B2 Speaking First book on Amazon and it contains a description of the whole B2 First Speaking test and you have 10 practice tests, one with uh, sample answers, you have ready to use mark sheets, you have a description of the assessment criteria and also advice on how to do the different parts, right? Uh, it's a pretty good book, I'm very happy with the result and uh, if, you want, if you're interested I'll just leave the link below. Uh, so you can take a look at it, right? So that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell. And until the next one, don't forget to keep smiling. Bye-bye.